Dear Campus Crusade for Christ family. Um, I would like to just talk a little bit about the values of Campus Crusade for Christ and us living that out, uh, especially during this time of lockdown. And so our values are faith, growth, fruitfulness, and family. And today I want to talk a little bit more about faith and specifically about the focus of our faith and prayer and, and how we pray. And so um, one of the documents we have with Campus Crusade explaining our value of faith um, talks about Hebrews 11, 1 to 6. I want to read uh, verse 1 and 6 for us. How, now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. And verse 6, um, and without faith it's impossible to please him, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. And then I want to read uh, what, what that document says about, about our faith. Living this out means that we, as Campus Crusade for Christ, aim to keep our focus on God and not on ourselves. We realize our need for Him in every aspect of life and ministry. We depend on His Spirit, moment by moment, yielding to Him as He uh, in instructs, abiding in Him and seeking to maintain the wholehearted devotion to Him. And so Charles Swindle said that the scary thing about ministry is that you can learn to do it. And I think that is so true for us that's in full-time ministry, that we can actually learn to do it. And what I think that means is that, and what he was trying to say, is that we can actually be, start to become competent in what we do and start trusting in our competency and less uh, on God. And that is a dangerous place for us as, uh, to be in ministry. And so I want to urge us to, that we don't function out of our competency, but out of divine connectedness, and that we would be spirit-filled and walk with the Spirit day by day, trusting the Lord um, in everything we do, and trusting Him for the results and what He's called us to do. So I want to go to Hebrews 12, verse 1 and 2, and it talks us about the focus of our faith and where that focus should be. And it says, and it's a... Um, familiar piece for all of us. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. And that is, I think, you know, where it's very clear here that our focus should be on Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. That's where our focus should be. And that's why we daily should be spirit-filled, walking in the spirit, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. But it, the, the, the passage before that talks about, you know, that there's distractions and there's two things, the weight that weighs us down and sin. And I'm not going to focus on the sin part of it, but I do want to focus on this part that's let us all lay aside every weight um, that slows us down. And that weight is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, it can be a good thing, but it slows us down. And for an example is, for instance, a tracksuit. Tracksuit is not a bad thing. But if you wear a tracksuit in the Olympic final when you run that race, that is not the good time to wear the tracksuit. It's going to wear you down. It's going to weigh you down. It's going to make you slower. And I think there's things in our lives that weigh us down. And one of those things can be that we can be good at ministry and our competency and that we can focus so much on our competency and what we have as Campus Crusade for Christ, our materials, all these things uh, that we have that it can slow us down and, and take our eyes off Jesus and not focus on him. And so I want to go back to, to Hebrews 11, verse 1 uh, and 6, and, and, and just touch on that again. It says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. And then it says in verse 6, And without faith it is impossible to please him, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists, and that the re he rewards those who seek him. And so, what is the definition of faith? It is that confidence that God exists. Verse 6 talks about that we must believe that He exists. And so, faith is the confidence that God exists. And then in verse uh, 1, it talks about the assurance of things hoped for, 
conviction of things not seen. And therefore, we believe God for the promises that he made and that he would fulfill them. And therefore, a definition of faith is con confidence God exists to do what he promised to do. And that is what faith is, is that we believe God exists and that he promises uh, to do what he, he will do, and he will do it. Um, so when we look at the rest of Hebrews 11, we look at and we see it's the, they call it the Hall of Faith. And uh, it's, it's got the names of, of many heroes of the faith um, and talks about Abram, Moses, David, Noah, uh, all these people. And um, the Jews know exactly who they were. They knew their stories and, and Hebrews was written for the Jewish community. And so they knew these guys, they knew exactly their stories. But here it talks a little bit about their faith and, and, and that their faith, uh, because of their faith, it was accredited as righteousness to them. And um, so let's look at Abram, for instance. Abram, why did he leave home? <laughs> you know, God told him to leave and he left. God didn't give him a plan and tell him exactly where. God was saying he will show him on the way. And so why, why did he leave? Because he had an encounter with God. He believed that God existed and therefore he believed the promises of God and he acted on those promises. And so we can go through all of that list and it's true for each one of those people that's mentioned there that they had an encounter with God and they believed his promises and they acted on those promises of God. And so that should be the same for us, you know, knowing that we know that God exists and that he promises to do what he will do and therefore we act on it. Um, so, I think when we look at these stories, well, when you go uh, to the Old Testament and you look at these individual stories, you can see where they acted in their own confidence that the, there was a mess. And only when they returned to God and put their focus on God that, um, that, that things, um, you know, was things sorted out and where uh, God acted and, and God came through and miracles happened. And so we can see when we focus on our own competency, it's, it's a dangerous place to be. Um, I want to come now to, to prayer. And prayer is one of the foundations of uh, our uh, Christian life. It's fundamental to our Christian life. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's important that we, we pray every day um, as we're praying during this time at 12 o'clock, every day meeting together and praying. But we're also praying every day, 22 plus 2, we're praying that the Lord will, um, of the harvest will bring workers into the harvest field. Um, and therefore, we, we, we pray that every day, trusting the Lord that he would provide that. Um, and so, but also I think sometimes we can pray comfortable prayers, um, you know, and I'm going to look at that a little bit, and, and prayers that are not stretching our faith. And so I want to look at two examples. So when we go to Acts 4, we see here in Acts 4, um, where uh, Peter and, and John is actually... They healed a man, and then there was a, they were arrested uh, because of that, and then um, threw into jail. Uh, and the next day, they they were they appeared in front of the council, and the council um, was asking them questions, but they couldn't ignore the evidence that this guy was healed. Uh, and then, but they saw that um, Peter and, and and John were just normal everyday pe pe people that did these things, but that they were with Jesus. And then actually in, in verse um, um, 18, it's, they said the following, um, when they realized they couldn't um, punish them or put them in jail, they said this to them. So they called them and charged them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. So they told them, don't uh, uh, do anything in the name of Jesus. Don't preach about Jesus or anything. And so when you look at that, you know, these guys were threatened, their lives were threatened. Um, Jesus was crucified, you know, a, a few days before that. Um, and uh, so their lives were in danger. And you would think that, you know, they would go back and then their prayer would be, Lord, protect us, save us, keep us safe, um, you know, from these guys. But that's not what they prayed. They went back to the believers and this is what the believers prayed. Verse 29 uh, in Acts 4 it says, And now, Lord, look upon their threats and grant to your servants that continue to speak your word with all boldness. So they didn't pray for protection. They didn't pray that God will save them. 
they prayed for boldness to go and preach the gospel and that's what they did they went out after that and they went to preach the gospel and um, and so one of the other um, uh, passages I want to look at is Colossians 4 and in Colossians 4 you find Paul in prison and Paul is writing this letter to the Colossian church and uh, so uh, from this 2 to uh, Colossians 4 verse 2 to 4 it says continue steadfastly in prayer being watchful in it with thanksgiving at the same time pray also for us that God may open to us a door for the word uh, to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison that I may make it clear which is how I ought to speak and so we see here uh, Paul is um, encouraging the church to be watchful in their prayer and thankful in their prayer and so you know we're praying every day 22 past 2 that the Lord will um, bring um, reliable men and women of our path to um, that are able to teach others and so are we watching and looking out for those people around us all the time are we looking for them are we believing that God will answer that prayer uh, for us and are we thankful expecting that he would do that and uh, so that is that is a question I have in my heart uh, even for myself you know I'm praying that but am I watchful but then we look at you know Paul and then he's asking for prayer now he's in jail now what do you think he would ask you know your common sense will think you know he's praying that you know he'll be released from prison um, and that you know he will go free that's what you think he would pray but no that's not what he's asking for he's asking he's not asking that his situation will change he's actually asking that he will maximize his situation that is in uh, he will maximize his circumstances and so this is what he's asking to for them to pray he's he's asking at the same time pray also for us that god may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of christ on account of which i'm in prison that i may make it clear which is how i ought to be or to speak so he's praying that the lord will open the doors for him to preach the gospel not to be freed and i'm sure he wanted to be free as well but but he's firstly praying that that the doors will be open for him and so you know when we're praying you know in faith you know are we praying safe prayers how does a prayer like Luke what kind of prayers are we praying and are we praying is there prayers in there that we are praying and trusting the Lord to stretch our faith and to open up doors uh, to what he's called us to do and so I want to share a personal story with you and I and I know all of our staff you all have stories to tell and I want you to tell your story actually uh, about this value of faith and living that out um, and so you know in the light of us praying 22 past 2 that the Lord will bring reliable men and women over our path I'm expecting God to answer that prayer and I'm daily every time when I'm engaging with someone I'm expecting the Lord to answer that prayer and I'm, I'm saying are you the one that's what I'm doing that's how I'm acting around them so I was trusting the Lord for a Bible study in Rosebank um, as I was walking there just seeing the, the people that are there believing that this is a place where we really need to get a, a Bible study going. Um, the first one we started wasn't very successful about three years ago. It's Brother Taffy. We started the Bible study there. And uh, so we, we, it didn't really work out uh, as we expected it would. Um, we had some good times there, but it, it didn't multiply as we expected. And so it kind of died, died down. But I kept trusting the Lord that, you know, he would, he would help us to start a Bible study there so I was expecting him to do something um, and then so two years later uh, one of our family traditions is that we go and watch the cricket at the Wanderers when there's a test match one of the days uh, me and the boys go through and go and watch the test we always go early because we want to miss the traffic and uh, we want to be in the stadium when the gates open so we go early and then we stop at Rosebank Mall and then we go to Krispy Kremes and we have some donuts and as we were sitting there two years ago when in, uh, South Africa was playing India, I shared with the boys that, you know, I'm trusting the Lord that we would get a Bible study going there. And so we prayed together and we, we said, Lord, please open up the door. Show us who are the reliable men and women in this place that we can um, start a Bible study with. And so that was two years ago. And so about a year ago uh, at our church, I was introduced to a young man that came to our church and as I engaged with him and asked him, so where do you work? He, he actually said that uh, he was working in Rosebank. And so immediately my eyes 
flared up and I was excited I said I need to get your number I need to chat to you and so eventually that's how we we got the Bible study going one of the other guys that was me and Taffy was also very faithful so we we got the two of them together and so I started this this group in Rosebank the exciting thing is that this group is now finished the bursting your Bible uh, Bible uh, study that Leader Impact has and now the next thing is that they've been praying for 10 to 15 non-believers that they would invite to an, to an event. And so we're going to start a virtual Bible study. Well, not a Bible study because they're not non-Christian. A virtual leadership development program where we're going to do 20 minutes of leadership development. And they're going to invite these guys to join in during that time. And we're going to have Sean Mooney um, do the first one where he's going to talk about leading in crisis. So we're excited to see what the Lord's going to do there. And so, but it was all because I was expecting God to answer the prayer. Now, it took three years for us to get to this point. But the thing is, I, I kept trusting that the Lord will answer that prayer and kept looking for people. Um, and that's how I, you know, treat everybody. When I, the people that I've discipled are starting working now, I constantly ask them, where are you working? Where are you staying? And as a result of that, um, we've started a, a Bible study in, in Midrand. Um, just before the lockdown, a burst in your bubble group. And during lockdown, actually, we started the group in Santon virtually. Um, but it was all because I was watchful, watching for opportunities, asking where people are at, where they're working, and using that opportunity then and, and to, to engage. And, and God answered those prayers. And then we started these groups. And so I really want to encourage you, um, you know, our staff and, 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 and friends of the ministry, you have those stories out there, and I want to encourage you to tell your your stories and how you are living out this value of faith um, of our ministry. Um, because when we tell our stories, it, it encourage we encourage each other. So I want to encourage you to tell your story, tell the stories of where you where you trust in the Lord and faith, um, but also let's encourage each other not to just be competent. Um, work out of competency but wholly reliant and focus on the Lord day by day and in prayer being watchful going to the Lord trusting him for every opportunity that he's giving us and that we would we would act in faith knowing that he made promises to fulfill the Great Commission and that he will do it and we trust him and therefore we act on his promise so thank you for your time I hope this is encouraging for you and so that we would operate in, in faith. Thank you.